Chuck. It's P. Simple. The revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series. The revolution will be digitized. Talk session series, the revolution. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Taryn Morgan, the founder and content creator of the Real Talk Session series. Today is a very, very special episode, and that's one that's really close to my heart. Um, today, we're honoring the lives of Michael Machoki and Nia Hack. Uh, April 4th, 2010, uh, they were tragically murdered after their engagement party. Um, I was there, and these are individuals who are definitely loved by many and have done great things for the community nine years later it is the anniversary of that april 4th 2019 and especially in the wake of the tragic loss of nipsey hustle i think that it's important to really highlight different positive community organizations that are trying to make a change especially when it comes to gun violence. So in dedication to their legacy, the Love Mike Nia Foundation was formed. The Love Mike Nia Foundation have done some great work for the community. Uh, yearly, they award scholarships to students from NJIT, which is the New Jersey Institute of Technology, and TCNJ, which is the College of New Jersey. And today I am in New Brunswick, New Jersey at Delta's restaurant for the fundraiser for the foundation. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little free flow. I'm going to have various members of the board and other individuals who knew Mike and Nia uh, closely. So stay tuned. So as I mentioned today, we're going to have various people, including board members, join me for some Real Talk sessions. And one of those amazing people is Kamaria. How you doing? Hi. What's going Good. on? So you've been involved with the board since its inception. Yes. So can you just go over some of the stuff that you guys have done? Because you guys have done uh, some amazing work in the past, but mm -hmm. the people need to know about it. So can you let them know, please? So um, we have been doing a lot of fundraisers mm -hmm. um, because we thought it was really important to um, memorialize them in a positive way to turn a tragedy into a triumph. Mm -hmm. So we've been raising a lot of money in order to, um, to give scholarships to a student at TCNJ and to NJIT for each academic year. Mm -hmm. um, we chose TCNJ because that's where um, Nia receives her bachelor's in interactive media. And then Mike, he attended NJIT and studied computer science there. Okay, cool. So we've done like basketball tournaments, um, the Delta's event that we do every year. Mm -hmm. um, we used to have uh, luncheons that we used to do, which was on the date of their, um, their would-be wedding anniversary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I think to date, you guys have raised around 20000 since its inception, I think? It's been a little over 17000 Over 17000 okay. Mm -hmm. So y'all can make it 20000 100000 please donate. So, yes, please do. Yes, so Nia was someone that you were extremely close to. Yes. So can you let us know like one of the biggest lessons that you learned from her? One of the biggest lessons that I learned from her um, was that whenever I would kind of want somebody to join my pity party, she never would join. Mm -hmm. And she would always instill in me, you know, courage and strength and pretty much tell me in a, you know, in a loving way yeah. to get myself together yeah. and to not be a punk. Uh -huh. And... Yeah, so I think when I think about, you know, giving up or I think about, you know, whining or complaining about things that are uncomfortable, I think about her and what she would tell me. And she would tell me to pull it together yeah. and to not be a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Nia was extremely hilarious and she always had a good energy and vibe to her. And that's one mm -hmm. thing I always appreciated, you know. Like you mentioned, she was able to really give you advice when you need it especially from a real point of view but from a caring point of view also so like can you give us like one of your favorite stories of your interactions with Nia oh, she got the, she got the smile on so it's a good one one of my favorite stories um let's keep it let's keep it G exactly okay? yeah. let's keep it G <laughs> um I remember and this is just this just speaks volumes to their love mm -hmm. I remember I didn't really know Mike like that mm -hmm. um I remember, like, like this is before I didn't really know him like that. Um, I remember being in the car. We were driving somewhere. I don't know if it was a party or wherever. But, like, the entire car ride, and it had to be at least about an hour car ride. She talked mm. about Mike and how much she loves Mike and how, you know, he's the one. And we were all just like, oh, like, 
I can't wait until I meet somebody like him. You know what yeah. I mean? But she was always talking about him, and you could just tell that the love was genuine. Um, but yeah, that just speaks volumes to their love and you know how strong it was. Yeah, definitely. So I appreciate your time and thank you for coming on. So. No problem. Right. Make sure you donate. Thank yes, you. Yes, donate. All right. So I have the pleasure of being with one of my OGs. He brought me in the fraternity of Alpha Phi Fraternity Incorporated as well as Mikey. So we have Mr. Darwin Darling. How you doing, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So you've been, you've known Mikey for years. You, you, like you said, like I said, you brought him in. So like, what's one of your favorite memories of Mikey? Probably the first day I met him. Okay. Sounds I met about that. Mike his first semester freshman year. And I was appointed both him and Mike Brown to be their, their mentors mm -hmm. at NGIT. They were both in what's called the Albert Dorman Honors College. And I was a part of the Albert Dorn Dorman Honors College as well at NGIT. Okay. They decided, you know, black students, give them a black, mem you know, black yeah. mentor, right? Um, so I had both of those guys. And Mike, we didn't really speak much at first. And then he kind of one day was just like, oh... I see you're in a fraternity. What's that about? Yeah. And we just started talking and then we would just, like, he was very inquisitive. So he would come by my room and we would just read books together. Mm. And um, we started just hanging out, like, as friends. Like, I was, like, more like my brother. I didn't really think that much about the fraternity or anything like that. And um, just started taking him and Mike Brown everywhere we went. So we would go to parties. They would go with us. Um. We'd go to Hofstra. We'd go to trenton or philly and um it really just was a, a really great relationship and i smile about that moment because i think about it sometimes and i'm like you know what even if he w it didn't end up being my frat brother that would have probably been one of my friends yeah my entire life yeah so it really just signifies to me how much of a good person he was and uh how much i miss him yeah you know so and that's one of the things, too, like, even we spoke about when you two met, when I met him and you, y'all were just all open arms, and y'all were definitely people, big brothers, actually, that I looked up to, I learned a lot from, so I definitely appreciate you and Mikey, and I learned a lot from him, and I'm sure you learned a lot, so, like, what do you think is one of the biggest lessons that you learned from Mikey? Don't assume anything. Mike was always the first person to be like, but wait, let's hear this person out. Yeah. Um... I remember there were guys that we were like, oh, no, we're not going to yeah. even entertain the thought of them being in the chapter. They don't have the right academics. They weren't um, in leadership at their schools. Mm. And he was the more open person to seeing beyond uh, how they look on paper yeah. qualities. He was like, you know what, let's try to give this person more of an opportunity uh, than we normally would. Mm. I, I would have to be honest. So he, I think he was really the person that showed me that everybody has room to grow in their life. Yes. And you got to give people the opportunity to be the person that you would, that you foresee them to be or that you would like them to kind of be within your circle. Because mm -hmm. you really, in my opinion, like the way I've always rolled in life is I want to surround myself with people who have similar goals. Yes. When you, when you, uh, have people that aren't in that framework yeah they're not going to bring positive into your life they're going to bring negative mm -hmm. and mikey kind of proved me wrong on that so yeah. you know it was a good it was really a good learning experience that's something i really learned from him yeah definitely and we continue to learn and salute to love mike nia foundation you guys doing great work and we'll continue the legacy so thank you for joining me oh Appreciate thank you, you man. all right thank you man so now i had the pleasure of being with the father of michael machoki one of the flyest dudes i know how you doing sir good how are you sir i'm doing well uh -huh. so wh what has been your favorite moment about the the love mike nia foundation the fact that every year we have an opportunity to meet all his friends and and just celebrate yes they are living mm -hmm. in the scholarship. Yeah. Foundation has been a blessing to our family because at least we know many of his friends I remember this way. Mm -hmm. What has the foundation done for the family like so far? Do they check in on you or whatnot? We have found a lot of the members of the fraternity who have kept in touch with the family. Mm -hmm. and that's great, great thing to do because when you lose a loved one, 
it gets very, very, very difficult. It's mm. true as time goes on, you get to learn how to adjust with it. Mm. But the fact is that the foundation is there and every year we have to come and meet everybody else is a reminder that uh, they are remembered. Yes. Well, we will always be here for you, sir, and your family. And just know that you always have us on your side. So we appreciate you. And thank you so much. Yes. You know, it's uh, the way I look at it is I'm hoping that those kids who are getting the opportunity of the scholarship and at least they're gaining from the fact that, you know, although it's from a bad incident, mm -hmm. at least this foundation has done a great thing to keep on remembering that Michael and Nia. Yes, sir. So thank you so much for joining us, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. So I have another one of the amazing board members, my sister Sade. How are you doing? How you doing? <laughs> all right. All right. Cool, cool. So you've been involved with the board since its inception. So what has been your most memorable experience being a part of the board? <sighs> wow. Um... I definitely have to say in the earlier years, um, probably within the first two or three years when we used to do larger events, we had our scholarship banquet. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one in particular time, it was um, at Casino in the Park in Jersey City and that was a lot of fun, just yeah. orchestrating it, the behind the scenes. Um, we all came together. At, I feel like that was the one time the entire board came together. Mm. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Machoki was there. It was really, it was such a beautiful time. Like, it was so awesome. Um, and, yeah, I definitely think that was one of my most memorable experiences. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we're here honoring Mike and Nia. Mm -hmm. And you were closer to Nia, correct? Yes. So, what, what's one of, like, the standout moments that you had with Nia? Oh, man, she was so funny. She was just so funny. I mean, honestly, Mikey was funny as well. Um, I knew both of them. Um, but one memory that stood out um, was when Nia, I think it was like a joint birthday party that Nia and Mike had. It was like years ago. I think mm -hmm. it was like 2010. Um, and they had like a joint birthday party down in Philly. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, it was like a bunch of us. We took a road trip down and... It was just so much love. It was awesome. Okay, that's dope. Definitely. So you've been one of the board members that I see that really goes a little bit extra hard, you know, and I salute you and applaud you for that because that's definitely needed. So, like, what really keeps you inspired and motivated, you know? Honestly, the thing that keeps me motivated is my connection to the story, to their story. Mm -hmm. Um about six years prior to Mike and Nia, I lost my brother to gun violence in yeah. Jersey City. I'm born and raised in Jersey City, so having that direct correlation and that connection with the Machokis and the Hawk family, I mm. immediately feel and felt for them, and I still do because that's something that it's, you it's just tough. don't you, get you never over. Heal. You, you, you don't fully heal, like mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's like every day it's, you're trying to heal more and more, um, and the fact that the foundation was formed around such a tragedy, but we turned it into something so beautiful. Yes. Um, that's what keeps me here. Like, I love the story. I love, I love how you take something tragic and make it into something beautiful where it's like, we're now uh, giving, giving of ourselves to other people, to the youth and stuff with the scholarships and everything like that. And mm -hmm. that right there is really big to me. Yeah, and you guys have done some amazing work, you know, and you definitely were part of that. So Thank salute you. to you. Thank and you so much. I pray that you have nothing but blessings and healing, everything you need to. So. Thank you. I appreciate right. that. Thank you. Recently, we lost Nipsey Hussle. Mm -hmm. So if you could say one thing to the streets, mm -hmm. what would it be? One, one piece of advice that I would give to the, to the hood. Yeah. Um, I would say compassion, empathy. Um, I think that's something that our community lacks. Mm -hmm. um, I think that instead of really getting to understand the other person across from you, um, we tend to shut down and be on the defensive when, um, honestly, opposition doesn't get you anywhere. So um, yeah. I would definitely say compassion and empathy um, because it goes such a long way. Yeah. I definitely agree with you. And that's one of the things, too. Like, a lot of people become a slave to their circumstance. 
and not realizing that the world is much bigger than where you're from, the block you rep and all that stuff. So, you know, I, I appreciate you for your words, your wisdom and whatnot. And thank you for coming out. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. All right. It was my pleasure. So we have another one of the amazing board members of the Love Mike Nia Foundation. Mr. Leonard, how you doing, brother? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. One of the things that stands out about you is I remember the first time we met, <laughs> Mikey introduced me. This man bought me a triple shot of tri Patron. <laughs> Got me lit. So I always appreciate him. Every time I come to Philly, he's a good dude. Definitely. Exactly. Yes. So you've been involved with the foundation since its inception. Uh, correct. So what has been your favorite moment with the foundation overall? Okay. So I've had several moments, several uh, key moments with the foundation. Okay. One of which has been just the uh, inception of the foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, several of us, it's nine years today. Yes. It doesn't get it. It doesn't get any easier, uh, but you, we could either lay down and accept it, or we decided we would do something about it. Mm -hmm. And so we created we created the foundation. I have been I've served as vice president for the foundation since its inception. Mm -hmm. And so just to give you an example of one of the, it's a beautiful thing when we host when we host the scholarship pageant. And we can actually give away money mm. to recipients from TCNJ um, on behalf of Michael and Nia. Mm. Um, so it's good to see the fruits of our labor. Yes. And you, since you've been involved in vice president, like, what do you think? What do you want to see this organization go in ten years? So in ten years, one of the things I'd like to see is I'd like to see us focus on. Uh, taking their story to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can look at doing a short syndicated film. Which I will help out with. <laughs> exactly, exactly why yes, I said yes, it. Yes. That um, will help and highlight and get the and get the word and get the word out. Um, basically, for those that don't know, um, Mikey and Nia were both beautiful people. Yes. Um, we. I often heard people joke and say that. Mikey and I were like twins. You know, he yeah. was the Philadelphia version of the Jersey version of me, and I was the Philadelphia version of him. Yeah. So one of the things I'd like the foundation to do is over the next ten years is to continue to do scholarships, to continue to give money, mm. also to take the to take the foundation to the next level by getting their story out nationwide. Also to make our scholarships even bigger, and also to look at doing a huge marquee event yes. every year. Whether it's a nonviolent march, whether it's a something that promotes gun violence, or if it's just something that um, gets the word up, word out about grief and loss. Because yes. one, one of the important things about the foundation is that, um, you know, in addition to all the friends and and um, collaterals and and, think, and all of those that have been inv impacted by this, mm -hmm. I don't know if a lot of people realize the family will never be the same. Yes, will never be the same. Um, the Machoki family, the Hawk family, I know they're broken, mm -hmm. and you know that can't be fixed. But the only thing we can do is continue to keep their legacies legacies alive and keep things moving mm. and let people know the two angels that are above looking out looking out for us yes um so that's so that's pretty much one of the biggest goals i'd like to see in 10 in 10 years is us to take things to the next level okay um you know we we're committed obviously you know like i said i've been the vice president since since in, in its inception mm. um and i'm and I, I love it. Yes. It, it kind of makes events like today where this is the, the, end, the ninth, ninth year of the anniversary date. Mm. It makes it a little bit more bearable. Yes. So you guys have been doing great work, definitely. And believe me, we're going to make this good thing go for 50 years, 100 years. So we're looking for, we're, we're actually yes. hoping and looking forward to that. Exactly. So great work. And thank you for everything you've done. Thank you. All, All right. right. So I have my last guest here, the president of the Love Mike Nia Foundation, Kashif. How are you doing, brother? I'm good. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. Thank you for housing me. This is a beautiful <laughs> event as usual. So this being the ninth year, we're getting ready for the 10th year next year. 
So, like, what are some of the plans you guys have with the 10th year and just in general for the future? With the 10th year coming up next year, the biggest thing is just sustainability of the organization mm -hmm. and being able to continue to give scholarships and hopefully increase the amounts of scholarships uh, to make it more impactful for minority students on the campuses of College of New Jersey mm -hmm. and in JIT. Um, being the 10th year, we're probably going to continue on how we have it now with the anniversary date yeah. because I think it's more impactful in the spring. Uh, we're trying something different to mm -hmm. see if that would change the crowd. Just keep it fresh. Okay, cool, cool. So you've been involved with the foundation since inception. Mikey brought me in, you brought me in. So what has been the biggest impact that Mikey has had on you personally? Um, the biggest impact that Mike had on me was just uh, the foundation of brotherhood. Like, when I think about my experience in joining the fraternity, he was that first person, that brother that represented and embodied Alpha to me. He was my first gateway into Alpha. Yes. He was the person I expressed my interest to, and he guided me through that process to make me be able to become a brother. Okay, cool. So, thank you so much for having me. Um, can you just let the people know how they can reach out to the Love My Nia Foundation and also how they can donate? Keyword, donate. Uh, you can definitely donate by going to our website, lovemikenia.org slash donate. Uh, we have a PayPal link on the website. It's also on our social media pages, on our Facebook page for Love Mike Nia. It's on our Instagram page, which is also under the name Love Mike Nia. Again, our website is lovemikenia.org. And to make a donation, you just go to that website or you can go to the direct link, uh, lovemikenia.org slash donate. Okay. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. Happy to be here. Happy to be here as well. I uh, think. Thank you for tuning in to another Real Talk session. This has been a great opportunity to get the great work that the Love Mike Nia Foundation is doing. Please, please, please donate to them because it's a great cause. They're doing great work, and there's only more work to do. Thank you for tuning in. Real Talk session series. The revolution will be digitized. Real talk session series. The revolution will be digitized. Talk session series, the revolution will be digitized. It's Pete Sample, the revolution will be digitized.